So Lord, he comes through those doors. He says this to the disciples. Peace be with you. And then he says again, Lord. Again, Jesus says, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Thomas was not there. Jesus comes again a week later. He comes to the disciples. And what does he say? He says the same thing. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Shalom. It's a salutation that the Jews, even Muslims use. Peace be with you. And upon with you also peace. It's biblical. If you watch the old biblical movies, and when people greet each other, they didn't say hello, good morning, good afternoon. They say peace be to you or peace be to this house. The people respond. Peace of the Lord be with you also. Kind of gotten away with that now, and it's only, it seems, liturgical formula that we use it. Peace be with you, with your spirit. And so when our Lord came to the disciples on the first day, when he came on the eighth day, he says the same thing. Peace be with you. You can say, well, that's a salutation that he's reading there. Shalom, peace be to you. It means goodwill, friendship, the best for you, prosperity, good health. All those things are encompassed in the word. It's just not peace. But it encompasses all those kind of elements as such. Extending to the other the best. And the other extends it back to you and with you also this peace. It's just not a word. It's just not a salutation. We may think that when our Lord comes on the first day, and then he comes again on the eighth day, the day of Pascha, and the eight days later, New Sunday as we call it today, that our Lord is simply greeting them as usual. Peace be to you. But it's not the salutation of peace that our Lord is giving them. It's a different kind of peace. Peace is multifaceted. It's like the cross itself. The cross has north, south, east, west, the four points of the compass. It's made of three kinds of wood, the cypress, the cedar, and the pine. That it's multifaceted, and peace is multifaceted. And what is this peace that our Lord is bestowing on the apostles? Well, we'll get back to that. But peace itself, you must understand first that peace is the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ himself is peace. It's the title of the Lord, Jesus Christ. He's the wisdom of God, he's the word of God, he's the power of God. He's the peace of God, capital P. Also, Paul writes that in Ephesians. He says that he himself, Christ, is our peace. He writes this in Ephesians again. He says, because he has broken down the wall of separation. The wall of separation, the enmity between Jew and Gentile, but not only between Jew and Gentile, but between God and man, the enmity has been broken. And Paul goes on and he writes that reconciliation and union is possible. This is the peace that is from up above. Reconciliation and union with God and man. Paul goes on, he says, it's because of the cross. It's because of the cross that the cross has made that possible. Reconciliation with God. Peace with God. Peace among men. And so in that sense, peace is a gift. It's the gift of Christ to us. It was a costly gift. It was the cost of his blood. It was the cost of his life. But he himself is our peace. And so we have peace as a salutation and greeting. We have peace as a gift. But we also have peace as a fruit. Paul in his letter to the Galatians, he talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. There's nine gifts. The third one is peace. It's that peace that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit. But a fruit has to be worked for. It's a fruit of labor. It's synergia. It's we ourselves working and the Holy Spirit working within us to give us that fruit of peace. The disposition of having peace within us. It defines our spiritual character. Paul elsewhere, in his letter to the Romans, he says, to those that are carnally minded, 
Life is death. To those that are spiritually minded, there's life and there's peace. Paul also writes in Colossians, he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And so that's another slice of peace if you want. But we are given the peace, the fruitfulness in our lives depending on what we do. If our character is spiritual and not carnal, then the peace as the gift, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is given to us. The gift of peace was given to us once and for all by Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected from the dead. That gift always remains with us. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the peace that He gives, it really depends on us and upon our spiritual work. And so we have salutation, we have gift, we have fruit. But let's go back to the Gospel today. That the peace that our Lord is talking about here is not those elements of peace. He's talking about something else. He's talking about a disposition. Remember the setting. But the apostles there on the first day of the week. It's a bad day for them. On Pascha, we celebrate. The first Pascha wasn't a day of celebration. They were locked up in that room for fear of the Jews that they were going to be killed because they were disciples of Christ. They killed Christ. And now they're going to come and kill them. They were frightened. They were afraid. And they were bewildered. John and Peter, they ran back from the tomb. And they told the other apostles in the closed door, his body is not there. We don't know what's going on. They were filled with uncertain anguish. They were perplexed. They were afraid. It wasn't good sentiment within them. Jesus knows that. And so Jesus comes through the closed doors. When he needs to open the door, he walks right through the closed door. And then he says again, peace be with you. Then again he says, again it says in the scripture, again Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I have also sent you. What is this peace? Well, our Lord told the apostles before he was crucified in the upper room. He said this. He said, be anxious for nothing, but the peace that I leave with you my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So before our Lord's crucifixion in the night in which he gave himself up, he already told the apostles, take it easy, calm down, don't be anxious. But I'm giving you a peace that the world cannot give is the peace from up above? Is the peace that will settle your hearts? And then Paul, he writes about that too. He says in Philippians, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that that peace will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <coughs> it is this peace, this disposition of peace that our Lord bestows on the apostles in the upper room. He takes away their anguish, their fear. He gives them the peace that only He could give, the peace that is from above, the peace that is not of this world. He allays all their emotions. He calms them down. Then the next week when he comes again, they're still there in the upper room. They're still not out about the city. They're still enclosed. Thomas is there this time for the Lord to complete what he wants to do when he comes in again and tells the apostles again, peace be with you. In other words, calm yourselves. I'm here and present with you. Our Lord does the same thing for us. That our Lord comes to us through closed doors. 
But we are his disciples. Jesus loves, and he takes the initiative. All the times we think we have to go to Jesus, well, we should go to Jesus all the time. But there are many times in our lives that Jesus comes to us. That he sees that sometimes we're locked in the upper room. That we're in lockdown as it were. That there are circumstances in our life. Affliction, <coughs> confusion, uncertainty, disgruntlement, whatever it is. And we're not happy. And we lock ourselves in. And we're fearful. And Jesus comes through the closed door of our heart into our soul. And he says, peace be with you. I am with you. I am the peace. I am your peace. And he's with us. And he helps us to get through that terrible time that we're in. He walks with us. That he gives us what is necessary. He doesn't just say, peace be to you and he departs. No, he remains with us to help us get through what we need to get through. But we need to get through it so that we could get out of the upper room, out of the lock, beyond the locked doors. It said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus doesn't want us to be locked in, in anguish, in enmity in confusion, in uncertainties, in emotions that wreck havoc with us. He doesn't want that. He wants us to be, have a peaceful life, a godly life, so that we could leave and go about to do what? Well, to do what we're called to in our life, whatever our vocation is. But the vocation of all of us as Christians, primarily, is to glorify God, to save our souls, and to bring the light of Christ to others. We're called to be the light of the world for others. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in the heavens. And so this gospel today, when the Lord says, peace be to you, and we'll say that in the liturgy all the time, peace be to you, it's a salutation, it's a greeting for prosperity, for fellowship, for well-being, but it's more than the salutation. We always have to think of the gift of peace. And the gift of peace is the Son of God himself. Also Paul says, he himself is our peace. We have to be mindful of the fruits because we are called to be fruitful. And the Lord says that you have life and have it more abundantly. It means be more fruitful in your life. To have as your character those fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's our task. That's our work. So let us, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. The season of Pascha is characterized by two main words. Peace, which is given to the disciples. But the other word is rejoice. That our Lord says to the Mary woman. It's a season of joy. It's a season of peace. It's a season that we're listening to the word of God, pertaining to those things in the kingdom of heaven. That Jesus Christ be our peace. And again, as the Apostle Paul says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To him be glory and honor forever. Amen. Christ is